The world of cinema is littered with forgotten greats. Cinematic masterpieces that at the time of their theatre release were overlooked, but then found a new lease of life on cable, video store rentals, and now home streaming. You say the word, Lord. I'm on my way. We've already looked at the film State of Grace, but for this episode, we thought we'd wind the clock back even further to 1955 to take a look at The Night of the Hunter, an American film noir thriller directed by Charles Lawton, the only film he ever directed. A very bye. We'd better go upstairs now, get undressed and lie down. We, what a nauseating prospect. And starring the late great Robert Mitchum, Shelley Winters and Lillian Gish. Why was it Lawton's only film? Well, upon release, The Night of the Hunter was a critical and commercial disaster. It was so badly reviewed and bombed at the time that Lawton would never direct another movie. But as with most movies derided at the time of release, time has been kind and like a fine wine. This movie has improved over time and become a beloved classic. Before we take a look at The Night of the Hunter, don't forget, we would like you to be part of our Forgotten Great series. So, if you have a movie that you love or you feel has been overlooked or needs reappraisal, then get in touch below, or over Twitter, or on Reddit, and we'll do a Zoom chat with you and give you a platform to talk over your movie of choice. But for now, let's get back to why you need to track down and watch The Night of the Hunter. Based on Davis Grubb's 1953 novel, which was a huge hit upon release and a finalist in the 1955 National Book Awards, the film tells a story of Harry Powell, played by Robert Mitchum, who is a serial killer that pretends to be a preacher who charms an unsuspecting widow, played by Shelley Winters, so he can get his hands on $10,000 in stolen bank loot hidden by her husband. The reason he set his sights on this widow is that he shared a cell with Ben Harper, her dead husband. God works in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. Yes, I was with Brother Harper right up to the end. Who was being hanged for murder for stealing the aforementioned money. But before his arrest and sentencing to death, Harper hides the money in a rag doll belonging to his little daughter Pearl, making her and his 10-year-old son John swear never to tell where the money is hidden. The plot hinges on Powell's pursuit of the money and John's determination to protect his sister and escape from a psychopath whom others assume is a virtuous priest who has married the children's mother. Needless to say, things unravel and the children are soon fleeing for their lives. And we won't say any more about this fabulous plot. In essay on the film, Guardian journalist Peter Kimpton commented that, at its heart, the film is a children's fairy tale, strange and idiosyncratic, but as a noir thriller, laced with the darkest elements of both genres. Death, guilt, greed, poverty, cruelty, biblical references, and a terrifying pursuit by the scariest of bogeymen. The children know where it's hid. John knows. Is that it, Harry? But why do we think this movie is great, you ask? Why should you give up 92 minutes of your valuable movie watching time to watch The Night of the Hunter? Well, here are three reasons why you should watch this forgotten great. A central theme to the film is the struggle between good and evil, summed up in Mitchum's character and his dire sermon on the story of the right hand and left hand, which evokes with biblical intensity the eternal struggle of his preacher character's own pathological quandary. This would be something that Spike Lee would take inspiration from for his 1989 film, Do the Right Thing, where the Radio Raheem character shows off his bling rings and talks about the tale of good and evil, and would also be used in the 1991 remake of Cape Fear, but more on that later. The whole story encompasses elements of the Bible, with the left hand being the hand that Cain used to strike his brother, and the right hand being the hand that has veins that run right through the soul of man. Interlocking them, he pulls and pushes to communicate the duality of love versus hate, and in turn showcasing his own internal struggle, and in fact, the internal struggle that we all face as human beings. The right hand, friends, the hand of love. Now watch and I'll show you the story of life. These fingers, dear hearts, is always a war and a tugging, one against the other. Your left hand is kicking much ass. 
I mean, it looks like the right hand love is finished. And it looks like love's a goner. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hot dog loves a winning. Yes, sir. -y. It really is powerful and memorable stuff that has influenced filmmakers and story writers for decades. Charles Lawton interpreted Grubb's book to be about the defeat of childhood demons, analogous to fairy tales where the child hero defeats a wicked witch preying on children. He called it a fairy story, really a nightmarish sort of mother goose tale. On set, Lawton regularly referred to his star Lillian Gish as Mother Goose to shape the actress's maternal savior role. Lawton's adaption was atypical in that he wanted his film to serve the novel by maintaining its themes and imagery. The movie at the time didn't have a huge budget. In fact, it would only have the production costs that were more akin to B-movies of the time. But Lawton and his cinematographer turned that beautiful constraint into an explicit advantage. With stunning images, monstrous shadows that are larger than life, and set construction that harken back to the silent movie days of German Expressionism, seen in such films as the 1920 movie The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. The visual aesthetic was picked up in the National Catholic Register's 2022 review of the film that a classically trained British actor who never directed a film in his life would produce such a visual and authentic tableau of Americana is that special kind of movie alchemy in action. If Lawton could have seen what people are saying about his film now, he would never have stepped out of the director's chair. Oh, she'll come dragging her tail back home. She'll not be back. I reckon I'm safe in promising you that. Placing Robert Mitchum in the role of the preacher was Lawton's stroke of casting genius, and was in fact a role that Mitchum would take into his performance for 1962's Cape Fear. You just put the law on my hands, and I'm gonna break your heart with it. In fact, interestingly, the love and hate tattoos on Robert De Niro's hand in Scorsese's remake of Cape Fear are actually a reference to Night of the Hunter, which many consider to be Mitchum's finest ever screen performance. And they wouldn't be wrong, as Mitchum absolutely tears up the screen in this movie, showing why he's every inch a formidable screen presence by relishing in his role as the movie's villain. Mitchum becomes the embodiment of Jekyll and Hyde, towering, intimidating, psychopathic, but also charismatic and charming, exuding a holier-than-thou facade. However, his facade breaks when he's caught off guard, letting his mask drop in front of the children and you really get the sense that he will murder them without hesitation if it would result in him getting his hands on the hidden money he's after. Open that door, you spawn of the devil's own stumping! In short, it's a truly stellar performance and one that no doubt contributed to Mitchum's rise in Hollywood. Get up in the morning and go to work and they paint a face on you or glue a mustache on They tell you what jokes to say and you say them. And... That's it. Yeah. Turn around and come home at night. But don't just take hard word for it. It's not just us here at Filmfellas who love The Night of the Hunter. Despite being derided at the time, here are some of the modern reviews of this great movie. Let's start with Pauline Kael's 1991 review. Despite its peculiar overtones of humor, this is one of the most frightening movies ever made and truly frightening movies become classics of a kind. And famed movie critic Roger Ebert had to say this in 1966. Charles Lawton, The Night of the Hunter is one of the greatest of all American films, but has never received the attention it deserves because of its lack of proper trappings. Many great movies are by great directors, but Lawton directed only this one film, which was a critical and commercial failure long overshadowed by his acting career. But perhaps the best reviews come from the only person who praised it upon release, the filmmaking legend that is Francois Truffaut. The Night of the Hunter is experimental cinema that truly experiments, and a cinema of discovery that, in fact, discovers. Now, before we close this episode, we thought we'd give some praise to Charles Lawton, the boy from Scarborough, the Yorkshire lad who became an acclaimed, accomplished actor, screenwriter, producer, theatre director, and whose only film directing credit is The Night of the Hunter. What's going on here? What's happening? He called me a lady. 
But with the Knight of the Hunter, Charles Lawton showed he had an original eye and a taste for material that stretched the conventions of the movies. At the time, it was risky to combine horror and humor and foolhardy to approach them through expressionism, even though these days in movies it is quite common for genres to be mashed together. For his only film, Lawton made a film like no other before or since, and with such confidence it seemed to draw on a lifetime of work. Critics were baffled by it, the public rejected it, and the studio had a much more expensive Mitchum picture, not as a stranger, it wanted to promote instead. But nobody who has seen The Night of the Hunter has forgotten it, or Mitchum's voice coiling down those basement stairs. Children? Children? So there you have it. If you're looking for a chilling movie that deserves to be rediscovered, check out The Night of the Hunter. Got a movie that you love or you feel has been forgotten? then get in touch and we'll do a Zoom call with you to record a future episode of Forgotten Movie Greats. Enjoyed this episode? Then please subscribe and share with friends. And also, if you watch this movie, tell us what you think below or on Twitter or Reddit at the Film Fellas UK. See you next time.